Okay, I think this is where you ask the questions and I try to answer them. So I'm ready whenever you all are ready. Well, yeah, the preseason ranking uh, certainly took some of it off. I, last summer I went to Honduras. I went to the Middle East to visit our troops. Um, you know, there was a lot of things going on that kept me real busy. And I, I was actually, I was pretty tired when, this, when the summer ended last year. And this year I spent a lot more time, uh, you know, with family and, uh, and just trying to rest and relax and get, get geared up for this season. Well, I think it is because uh, there's some of the finest coaches in America here. There's absolutely, the, I think, the greatest talent base uh, of any league. I think that uh, there's, I would have to say there's more passion at uh, everybody's home stadium, probably. Uh, I think just, even if you look at the attendance, uh, I think we're 97, 98% full every time we, we play a game. and. Uh, I think when you look at the NFL draft, there's more SEC players on average that, that go. I mean, there's just so many reasons to point to that. But just living in it and living in another, you know, another league, there's not, there's not a lot of comparison in my opinion. Coach, Georgia, Alabama, Arkansas coming up with new quarterbacks. What are some of the challenges that come along with that? Well, if, you're, if your new quarterback's a freshman, there's a lot of challenges. If your new quarterback is a fifth-year senior, I don't think there's as many challenges. Uh, you want your quarterback to be in a position where everybody believes he can get the job done. A lot of times that happens through practice and it happens through games. Um, and if you've got a brand new kid, I mean, no one knows what to expect. Well, now we got Joe Cox. He hasn't played in a lot of games and he hasn't started but one game but he's been around four years going into five now, and everybody who's been around him understands that he is prepared and ready for this opportunity. So he has the confidence of our team and, and our staff, so that's huge. Um, I, when, I, when I coach quarterbacks, I'm looking for an accurate passer. I'm looking for a great decision maker. I'm looking for a guy who can handle the pressure of the job, and I'm looking for a guy who can lead. And Joe, you know, personifies all those attributes. So I feel like we're in pretty good shape. Coach, you're the guy who's been waiting in the wings. I know that's the state of Florida State. Not so much at Georgia, though. No, it hasn't been at Georgia as much. We did play, you know, Green from his freshman year, Stafford from his freshman year. But, I, yeah, I'd love to have an experienced quarterback to roll in there and, and take over that job because there is definitely um, – in the process of learning how to play quarterback, you're going to make mistakes. In the process of doing anything, no matter what you do in life, as you learn it, you're going to make mistakes. So if you're making them as a freshman and sophomore in practice instead of in the game, that's a good thing for your team. But uh, sometimes if you play a youngster, you, you're going to – everybody's going to watch his maturation uh, out in public rather than him doing it in private. Well, I'll say this, our, uh, our record in opponent stadiums is much greater than our record at home. We have a higher winning percentage in opponent stadiums than we do at home. I think we're like, uh, something like 30 and four at a people's opponent, at, at opponent's houses rather than what we have at ours. And ours is, at home is one of the best in the history of Georgia football at home too, but, uh, so I can't really say what, what I'd rather play home or away. It really doesn't matter to me. I'll tell you what, I got enough problems to deal with where I don't really worry about everybody else's issues. And uh, I just, you know, want to welcome him to the league. And, and you know, he, he's like everybody else. We're all just trying to prove that, you know, we're the best team in the East or the best team in the West. And we're just, we're just trying to do the best we can. And I'm sure he's doing the same. That's Is what I'm trying to do. Is there a coaching code, though? I mean, he's had a lot to say about a lot of coaching. Uh, I wouldn't say there's a coaching code. No, I, I think that. Uh, um, I think I do think we all have a very uh, healthy respect for each other, and um, I 
think that shows up. Well, they are. Awesome. You know what? I'm just, I'm just trying to do the job the best I can, and I'm thankful to be at Georgia for nine years in a row. You know, that's good. It is, and uh, you know, Coach Petrino got an unbelievably good track record as a collegiate coach, and he, um, uh, he's in year two, year two. I know my year two, we, had, we were 13 and one. Coach Myers year two at Utah, outstanding. His year two at Bowling Green, outstanding. His year two at Florida, outstanding. You know, there's a lot of coaches that hit, even you know, Coach Saban in Alabama, year two, fantastic. Uh, I, I'm, I'm as concerned about that as anything in that uh, they've worked out the bugs, they've got guys buying in, and uh, they're ready to hit the ground running. Uh, so it's, it's going to be exciting. What do you base your success on Well, I base my success on uh, my reliance on the Lord for strength and wisdom and, um, and uh, hiring wonderful men that know what they're doing, very competent guys that are good family men that believe in treating players a certain way and uh, the right way. And, um, and I'm at Georgia. I'm at a place that has tremendous resources when it comes to facilities and when it comes to the passion of the fans and when it comes to the talent base in the state, I mean, I'm at a, I'm at a great place too. You're getting different answers from different coaches on this question. Uh, um, you like your players, obviously, but if you could coach one other player who's currently playing in the SEC, who would it be? Um, I refuse to answer because that tends to get somebody bent out of shape or one of my guys been out of shape, but I mean, it's not. I'm sorry not to answer it, but. Well, I hope he stays healthy. Um, he has gained 20 pounds since the first day he got on our campus. I don't think he's lost one bit of speed. He's stronger. He's as fast, maybe faster. He's agile. Um, I hope that we can. Get him the ball enough to take advantage of his skills because he's a special player. What's the biggest question in the Well, probably who will start at tailback. Um, and also, you know, will someone really step up and become a force at the defensive end position? Another big question is who's going to kick off, you know, and how well will he do? Coach, is it nice to have so many offensive it helps a lot. It hurt that Tanner tore his shoulder up and won't be able to play. He was a guy that was ready to – he just got in a position where this kid can play. He's strong. He's smart. He, he has enough experience, and losing him didn't help. But we still have enough guys with experience uh, that are healthy that should do well. And, we, and quite frankly, some of our experienced guys that are returning, Chris Davis, hip surgery, Josh Davis, two shoulders, um, Trent Sturdivant, of course, had his ACL. Vince Vance had his ACL. So four of the guys that we're saying are returning starters and players up front are still coming off of surgeries that are fairly significant. So uh, hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll hold up and do well. Last question. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's great teams and, you know, you, you can only play them one at a time. And, and I think preseason schedules are a little bit deceiving because when you get to the end of it and you look back, you'll say, well, so-and-so won as good as we thought and so-and-so was a whole lot better than we thought. So it's, it's hard to predict how strong a schedule is. But as I look at it, it looks, it looks pretty brutal.